Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a big garden harvest and this is going to be the first big harvest for the year so it's very exciting. Today I have a lot of greens and herbs to pick and I also have some radishes as well. So I've pulled out my nice big bowls. Anytime I have to pick greens from the garden I always get the largest bowls I can find because they really do take up a lot of space and we have a good amount to pick today. In the bed that was right behind me I have a lot of kale and bok choy to pick here. I have two different kinds of kale. This first one is a Siberian kale, and then I have the Dazzling Blue behind, which is so beautiful. So I'm going to be picking both of these today, and I'll probably just mix them all together. And then next to that, I have lots of bok choy, and I think I'm going to probably go through and harvest most, if not all, of this today. Because since we've had a couple of very warm days, I think we've gotten up to like the mid to high 80s a couple days, along with not getting a ton of water or rain these bok choy plants are starting to bolt. You can see the starts of some flower buds on some of these. And once they start to flower, they're gonna get very bitter and the flavor is not gonna be as good. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and harvest pretty much this whole patch and we're just gonna have a lot of bok choy over the next week or so. So for all the kale that I'm going to pick, since we do have a lot of greens already in the house, I don't know how much of it we can eat fresh this week. My plan is that for whatever we can't get through, I'm going to blanch and freeze the kale. That's my favorite way to preserve kale and also other greens like Swiss chard collards and broccoli greens. I think the texture is really nice when I preserve it that way and I really like to use it for soups in the fall. And even though fall is quite a ways away, I do like to do this preserving of my greens in the spring because I find that the greens taste really nice in the spring. They're really Really nice and tender and sometimes I can't get the greens to grow as nicely in the fall because for fall greens you're planting them in late summer and at that time it's really hot and the soil's really dry so my greens don't always grow really reliably in the fall so now that I know I have a really good crop of greens right now I can go ahead and preserve some of that up and get a head start on the preserving season so that we have enough for the fall and winter because I do really like having frozen greens in the freezer for the cold weather soups that we eat a lot during that season. And my priority will probably be to eat all of the bok choy fresh because I don't really know of a really good way to preserve that. You can probably do bok choy kimchi out of it, but I don't know if that would be our favorite way to enjoy it. So I'm just gonna try and enjoy as much of that fresh. It's kind of one of those crops that we have a very short window of time to enjoy it in the spring and the fall. We usually only do like one big harvest and we'll do that twice a year. You can always succession sow crops like that for things where you usually just harvest it once, but I'm not always good at continuing to sow seeds for those things every two weeks. And it's also very dependent on weather because once it starts heating up for the summer, we can't really grow these cool weather crops. So I usually just do the one batch during the spring and for the kale today I'm going to be picking out the larger leaves that are on the edges of each of the plants and leaving the smaller inner leaves to continue growing and that way we'll probably get two to three maybe even more harvests of kale so that those plants can keep going for the season so let me get started with these two things and then we have some other things to harvest in the garden as well I had pulled out this large bowl which is my largest one but I'm looking at the kale now and I still don't think this is going to be big enough so I actually pulled out this flexible tub and I'm going to be harvesting into this and I think that's going to be really nice because after I harvest I'm going to want to wash these greens a couple of times and I'll have room to do that in this nice flexible tub.
I'm actually pretty surprised at how good this bok choy looks because last week when I was out here taking a look at them and I showed them during the garden tour, I didn't have high hopes for the bok choy at all. It was still looking pretty small and some of them were bolting and also there was some slug damage on other ones. But in just a week, I feel like they doubled in size and they grew so quickly that even the slugs couldn't eat them fast enough. So all of these inner leaves are really nice. And for any of the plants like this, where these leaves have a lot of holes in them, I'm just gonna take those off and feed those to the chickens because they will really enjoy those greens. But even if I take the outer leaves off, like that's a pretty decent plant. I'm not mad about that. So for these plants, rather than picking individual leaves, I'm just cutting the entire stem off because I'm not looking for repeated harvests of this and I'm just cutting the whole plant down. And that way I'm gonna clear out this portion of the bed and I'll have more space to plant some summer things. And here's an example of one of my plants that was starting to bolt. You can see the little flowers there and the stem starts to get longer as well when it starts to bolt. You can see that like central stem getting longer to form a flower. Here's what it's looking like after going through this bed. It looks a lot emptier now. I have all this empty space where I picked the bok choy. I did leave just a couple of small plants that could use a little bit more time. So I'll let those continue growing and we'll probably be harvesting this kale every two weeks or so. It's gonna replenish so quickly even though I picked so much today. And here's what I have so far. Two big bowls of bok choy and a big bucket of kale. And when I'm picking greens, I like to immediately start soaking them in water because after you pick them, they're going to wilt so quickly and putting them in water helps for them to get like really nice and crisp. And while I'm walking around picking other stuff, especially since it's a little bit sunny today, they won't get too wilty while I'm out doing other stuff. And then on to the next area that I'm going to be harvesting from. This is our blueberry bed that has a lot of oregano growing in it. And everybody always tells you about how mint spreads and takes over a bed, but nobody ever mentions oregano. So if you have not heard it, here is your word of warning that it will take over. This bush started off as like almost nothing and now it's completely just taken over. It's grown a lot even since last week when I showed it. It's like almost as tall as the blueberry bushes now. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut down as much of this as possible, even if I can't use it all. I just need for it to be smaller than this. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this back pretty severely, like almost down to the ground probably. And then I'm going to be drying this oregano. So the plan with the oregano that I'm harvesting is to dehydrate it and use it as a dried herb and it's going to be really good to restock on this because oregano is 
probably my most used dried herb. But even so, I am picking so much today since I'm trying to clear out this bed that I think I'll have more oregano than I can use in even a couple years. So I might have to see if I'm going to try and do something fun with it. I was thinking maybe I could pulse it up with some garlic and salt and make a seasoned salt out of it, or maybe infuse it into oil or something like that. I haven't really decided, but a lot of it is going to be dehydrated. And when I'm dehydrating more delicate herbs like this in the spring, usually what I do is I'll just lay it out on a baking sheet that I've lined with a dish towel or maybe I'll use my dehydrator trays and just lay them on an open shelf and I'll just let them naturally air dry and dehydrate at room temp for a few days rather than actually putting them through the dehydrator so that they'll dry in a much more gentle process and they'll keep a lot of their flavor and nutrients. I don't always do this in the summer because in the summer it's very humid and then I risk my herbs and other things going moldy if all of the moisture doesn't completely evaporate out of them. But in the spring and fall, it's usually fine for me to just let them dry at room temperature and they'll usually be completely dehydrated in a couple of days. I just have to see if they're nice and dry and crumbly. I was thinking another use that I could also use this oregano for is if I dry it out, I can kind of sprinkle it in our chicken's nest boxes and maybe in their bedding. I have heard that some people really like to do this because it can help to prevent mites and other bugs and keep their nest boxes a little bit more fresh. It's also supposed to be good for your chickens to eat it, but our chickens don't usually like to eat the oregano, so I think I'll just do like the nesting box idea. And this is the nice big bowl of oregano that I ended up with. And here's a look at the bed after I've gotten rid of some of that oregano. It looks so much better. You can actually see the blueberries now and I actually even found some of the strawberries that were being buried by the oregano here. So looking much better and it's probably gonna grow back again so I'll have to give it a couple of trims throughout the season but for now, I think that's pretty good. And then I think the last thing I'm going to harvest today are some of these radishes. They look like they're getting to be a really good size and I have seen some damage on them, unfortunately. You can see here, there are some bites here and I've seen a lot of like roly polies or pill bugs munching on these, which is unfortunate, but thankfully the damage is, you know, pretty much just on the surface. These are still going to be fine to eat and these radishes are looking really nice. I love these radishes. These are the giant of Sicily radishes and like the name implies they are very large and I find that they do not get pithy even when they get to a really nice big size. So I've already got some nice ones there. So I'm just gonna go along the line and pick all the ones that are ready to harvest. Any little ones like that I'm not gonna pick but I'll just thin out all of the big ones and then any of the ones that are smaller I'll leave to keep bulbing up for a couple more weeks, but we'll probably get a good amount from this line of radishes. So that's in this bed, and then I have more in this other bed that I'm gonna grab as well.
So here is the final harvest for the day. Lots of greens in here. We have our big bowl of oregano, the bok choy and the kale, and then a nice big bunch of radishes. They're not perfect radishes, but they're definitely still edible and we will still eat and enjoy them. And this is just a beautiful start to our spring. Even though this has not by any means been a perfect spring in terms of gardening, we've had a lot of hot, dry weather that is not really good for spring crops, and we've also dealt with a lot of things eating our vegetables, whether it be voles, pill bugs, or slugs. But it's always nice to do a nice big harvest like this because even though these vegetables may not be like pristine, it's still a lot of food that we were able to grow for ourselves. So it's always really encouraging. And I feel like this year, despite having a few setbacks, I feel very optimistic going into the gardening season. I'm not really sure why. Maybe it just comes with a few years of knowing that things are going to happen, but you're going to get lots of food anyway. So I hope that's encouraging for anyone who maybe has had a few fails in the garden so far. Just remember that if you're going into spring summer you still have so much time and even if you mess up a few times or if things happen you'll probably still end up harvesting lots of awesome food so this was a nice first harvest for the year and i'm looking forward to more of them this year i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video thank you so much and i will see you again in the next one